uh, we're going to do some crafting with JavaScript. Um, I, um, I call it crafting because I don't think it's any different. I don't think it's harder than making quilts or um, I like doing cross stitch a lot. I, I have like nine or more, possibly dozens of half finished cross stitch things in my closet. <laughs> I don't think I've ever finished one, but it's really fun to do. Um, so, uh, so I want to talk a little bit about JavaScript, why I like it, why it's fun, and, and we'll make some cool stuff. Um, I figure we're gonna, we can, we've got 45 minutes, we're gonna build a blog, and then we're gonna play with some lights and robot things. Um, so who am I? First of all, hi Cincinnati, thank you so much for having me. Awesome. <laughs> um, so can I, I just kinda wanna get a read of the audience so I know kind of what things to drill down on, what things not to. Um, if you are a developer professionally, can you put your hands up? Okay, awesome. Um, if you are, have done a lot of node um, development, can you raise your hand? All right, sweet. Okay, so if you're a developer or if you're not, I think you'll get stuff out of this talk. Um, and if you've never done node and you're a developer, you get to see a little bit of that. So I'm the CTO of a company called the Levo League. We do um, career advisement and elevation geared towards Gen Y women. Um, we just did um, had some time on our site the other day with Warren Buffett, which was really awesome. Um, turns out he's a really nice guy with lots of sisters, and he really cares about um, this generation of, of ladies and them doing well, which is really neat. Um, helped start an organization called Girl Develop It. You guys have Girl Develop It Cincinnati, run by um, the wonderful Aaron Kidwell that I see sitting in front of me. Um, <laughs> and you, the, you guys have cookies, which is something that we don't have in New York, so <laughs> that is <laughs> a clear improvement. Um, I'm on team, Node, team NodeBots, so um, this is something we just started, so it's not really a thing yet, but it's going to be. Um, is anyone going to JSConf or heard of JSConf? Okay, you are going to JSConf. Um, so we're going to be um, giving a workshop um, and building some robots, and it's going to be super fun. So I think you have to sign up for it, so yeah. Um, so why are we like sitting here building things and why am I not talking about my life or, or whatever? Um, uh, because I, I think it's super, one of my favorite things to do first of all is code as a group, right? Because it's really terrifying, it's terrifying for me. It's probably not terrifying for you guys. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think it's really, it's like pair programming to the max, right? It's like everyone, like if you make a selling mistake, at least nine people are like, oh, look at that selling mistake. So I, I think that's super fun. So please, um, please feel free to yell things um, and, and help as we go. Uh, but I also think that, uh, that there's something that's really important to get the, world, world, uh, the word out there about. Um, and I think that the software, I, I blame the software community for this because sometimes we can be a lot, we can be really like, oh, you know, like, I'm so good at this thing, you know, you wish you were doing it, you wish you made the internet, that's what we do. Um, but I just think that this shit really isn't that hard, right? Like, this shit isn't hard at all. Um, it's hard to be an expert, right? Um, and it's hard to be an expert at anything. It's hard to be an expert at cross stitching. It's hard to be an expert at someone that like actually finishes their cross stitch and frames it and like gives it to people, right? It takes a lot of time and a lot of practice. Um, and so when you to be an expert at software development, it takes a lot of time and a lot of practice. But that's that's what everything is. Um, so uh, JavaScript is more of a personal love, but it's probably something you've heard a lot if you're near this community. Um, and so. If you don't know the background, which I didn't see a lot of hand raised, uh, I saw a lot of hands not raised that people here aren't developers, so I think it's good to give a little background to the community. So uh, when you have a computer and you are going on the internet, what you're doing is going um, and getting information from a server that lives somewhere else. Um, and that information comes across to your machine um, as, as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, and those are the three things that your machine is getting to tell you what a website looks like, what it says, and what are some of the animations that it does. Um, JavaScript was really made for, initially, for sites that look like this. This is like the original Wired site, I think. I don't think anything was animated, but I just saw it and it was really ugly. <laughs> but it was like a lot of, a lot of the um, animations and buttons you click on and they go away and, and things like that. Um, that's what it was made for originally. Um, another thing that happened after that was um, 
asynchronous calls to your server. So I don't know if everyone, everyone here um, looks about my age. So you guys remember the day, the days where like you would put your information on a website and then you would click submit and then you would sit there for the next five minutes while you're waiting for like the information to get to the server and that information to get back to you. Um, so when JavaScript started allowing us to make asynchronous calls to servers and get information back from them, those web pages got to stop freezing and it, it was able to keep doing things while waiting for that information to get back. So that's just a little bit of background. Um, so, but now, uh, for the past couple of years, a lot of people have been working with Node, and I wanted to put a lo Node logo on this page, and I never did, so I guess we'll just imagine it. Um, so, uh, server-side JavaScript has been around for a really long time, but um, Node is, uh, is a library or a platform, rather, that, that lives on servers and allows you to make calculations and things like you would do with, with languages like Ruby or Python or things like that. So um, now there's a really large community forming around the idea of doing both server-side JavaScript, which lives on the server, and client-side, which is the stuff that comes over your, to your computer and manipulates things in your browser. Um, so that's, why, that's one of the reasons I'm a big fan. Um, I like JavaScript before people before Node before it was cool, um, but uh, however, I think it's really neat that you can do it on both client side and server side. Before that, I was doing C sharp on the on the server side, so just that's a little bit of my background. Um, so here's something you're going to have to come really um, familiar with during the next half hour, and that is your terminal um, on your machine. And I'm just pretending that we all have Macs. Uh, I see a lot of Macs. If you don't, if you don't have a Windows, if you don't and you have a Windows machine, it's not far off. So, um, so the, most of this applies to you. Um, and where there's something that for a Windows machine needs to be different, I'll let you know. Um, so, your terminal is something really. Um, if you're not a developer, actually, even if you are a developer and you like use programs like Visual Studio or like other IDEs that make it easy. Your ter terminal is something that's pretty terrifying because you don't really know it. But it's really, um, uh, your terminal is your friend and it can do lots of things and enables you to do lots of things. Um, so you have your terminal and I like, to, um, I like to kind of liken it to, you know when you're a chef, like I like cooking, it's a hobby of mine, right? I'm not a chef. I like cooking um, recipes that I find on the internet. Um, and if I were to find a machine like this, I would be like, wow, I have no idea what this does. It would be terrifying. Um, there's a lot of buttons. That looks like a rolling pin, that thing. I don't even know what this is, actually. I, I googled um, a, a restaurant-grade food processor, and that's what that is. Um, but, so, but that thing looks really powerful, and it looks like I could cook a lot of things with that if I only knew how to use it. Uh, and so like, that's how I like to think about my terminal. It's, it's super powerful. It's really just Microsoft Word or, or um, TextMe or like any of the things that you might use on a regular basis to, to write text. Um, it's just like that, except it's a little more powerful. So it doesn't really have to be something that's scary. Um, so we're gonna, be, we're gonna be in there a lot today. Um, so here is um, some background to Node. If you have Homebrew on your, um, on your Mac, it's really easy to install Node. You just do brew install Node. And it sets things up for you. And it, uh, it might give you some extra instructions to add Node to your path file. Um, but a lot of times, that you don't, you don't, that's not the case. So you do brew install Node. And then there's something else that you want called NPM. Um, incidentally, for Windows machines, you're not going to have homebrew. I don't think they have homebrew that I don't know of. Um, but what you'll do is you can go to nodejs.org, and there are some instructions for installing Node on a Windows machine. Um, and then there's this curl command that installs um, npm for you. And what npm does, it's, um, it is a place where Node libraries live to make them easy for you to access it. So if I want to use a library called Express, um, I would type in npm install express, and it would get that information over to my machine. Um, so it's kind of like if you've done uh, Ruby, it's like Ruby gems. Um, but npm is where all the node packages live. It's node package manager. Um, so the first thing we're going to do today is build a blog. 
Um, and I'm going to talk a little about a little about the library that we're going to use. It's called Getty. Um, Getty was made by the gentleman over at Yammer um, as a scaffolding language for Node. And what Getty does is make it super easy to build something really quickly, which is why we're going to do this in the next 10 minutes or so. Um, so after I do, um, after I install Node, and then after I install NPM, it makes it really easy for me to do things with Getty. So the only thing I have to do um, after that is do npm install Getty. And I'm not going to do that now, because sometimes that can take a little long. Um, but after you do that, you'll be able to do what we're about to do now. OK. Um, is this big enough? Let's make it. Just make it a little bigger. Is that going to be easy? Maybe it would make me easier to read. Um, and then where can I see the font size? Here we go. Maybe 18 would be good. I don't open up a new window. Okay. Oh, that, the settings didn't take. Is this big enough, though? Okay. All right. Well, then I won't mess with it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going over to um, over to a folder. I, I have some shortcuts. So when um, but when I'm doing something that you need to know for your um, for your development, I'll let you know. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a folder for us, um, and that that command is mkdir that makes a directory, and I'm going to call it qc merge. Okay. And then I'm going to CD into that folder, which is how I, um, which is how I navigate into that folder. So now in terminal, I'm in the folder of QC merge demo. Um, and so I've installed Getty globally, which um, is something you can do with npm. If you add dash n, uh, uh, sorry dash g to any of your commands, it will install a library globally. So that means I can use Getty no matter what folder I'm in. Um, so what I'm going to do is, in order to create a Getty app, I'm going to do Getty app, and then we'll call it blog. So I just created a, um, an app called blog. And now I'm just going to take a look at what it created in that folder. And if I do ls, it'll show me what's, what's in that folder. Um, so if I go into blog, Um, I can see it created, actually, let's take a look. So I'm going to do vi dot. Um, vi is a way for me to read um, my files in the terminal. Um, I have a plugin that allows me to read a bunch at a time. So that's why it looks like this. Um, so what, what Getty has done is it's made me a few folders. I have an app folder. And that's where my controllers, helpers, models, and views live. You don't have to know what that means. If you're not a developer, that's fine. Um, what, what we're going to do, I'm showing you what's in there. But what you need to know is the commands that we're about to do. Um, and it looks a lot like a Rails app. I have a public folder. Um, and this is where my modules live, if I have modules. Um, I have a Jake file, which is just like a rake file, um, but for JavaScript. And I have some config files. Um, that's where I decide um, where my uh, where things are being stored. Um, Getty apps default to local memory, so um, when I'm in, in development, it's just going to be saving things locally. Okay. So I'm exiting out of here, and I'm actually going to go up a folder, and I'm going to do Getty scaffold, and that's how I create an object. So I'm going to do, um, for blogs, I'm going to need a post. So I'm going to do Getty scaffold post. And then post um, needs some properties. So when I do a blog post, uh, uh, there's going to be a title of the blog post. And that blog post is also going to have a body. And so that's what my blog post is going to look like. So I'm going to do title, body. And it defaults um, to, to text. Um, JavaScript objects are just objects, but if you have to be specific, there's a few different data types that Getty supports. Um, OK, I'm going to CD into blog. 
Okay, so it added um, a model, a view, controller, um, a whole bunch of things. We'll go in there and take a look, but also I'm going to add some authentication. So I'm going to do Getty auth. Um, okay, so Getty by default allow, gives you auth of username, password, Twitter, and Facebook, I believe. So um, when I do Getty auth, it's going to make an authentication system for my app. So I'm just going to say yes. Um, and so what it's doing is it's, it's adding um, authentication to my app. It's going to overwrite a couple of my controllers. Oh no. Oh, it seems to be still on, like. Um, we can live without the auth. All right, well, for the sake of time, we'll live without the auth. Um, okay, so let's, um, so let's take a look at what adding the um, posts created. Okay, so if I look at my models, I now have a model called post. And if I go in there, I have two properties. One is title and the other is body. This is a big commented thing that they just add with your, with your models for some reason. Um, Change the color to not have blue and black. Yeah, that's probably hard to read. Okay. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> All right, I'm going to make it this. And then, oh, that was my fault. And then I could do a reload, actually. That should, it should work. No, nope, it doesn't. Why doesn't that work? I don't know why that doesn't work. I'm sorry. Um, the, the blue part is comments. Oh, but you can't see that either. Oh, in Vim? Okay. See, this is one good thing about pairing. You get to learn new Vim tricks. Um, so colon set. EG equal BG. Oh, background. Mm. <laughs> we tried. <laughs> um, Okay, well, the blue part is the comments and all this in the navigation. So I'll, I'll talk through the navigation, and the comments aren't, uh, they aren't, they aren't relevant to what we're, what we're doing right now. Um, so I have this post in my model. I have my views. I get all these different views. So I have an add, edit, index, show um, for my posts. Um, so I'm going to exit out of here. And in order to run the Getty app, I just have to type Getty. Um, so it automatically goes on my port 4000. So I'm going to open up Chrome, get a new window. Oh, you guys don't get to see my Justin Bieber background. Um, so 4000 gives me my Getty app, um, which is not responsive. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and um, it gives me, this is the default app, but if I go to posts, um, I see all my posts there, and then I can create a new post. And then my new post is this, is a post about merge. Um, then I add a post. Um, and now I have my post, and I can go here and I can check it out. Now, in order for this to be a blog, I have to do a lot of styling and things. This is a really ugly blog. Um, but you get the idea that it's super easy to start a blog and, um, and play around with Getty. They have directions for the auth, and it makes it really easy to, to do your login and things. One thing that we should add um, is comments, and we can do that um, uh, for, for the sake of time, I'm not going to add comments now. You can do it the same way. You just have to create a relationship between the two. Uh, I have, for the past six months, I've been working on a, um, a screencast of how to build a blog in 10 minutes with Node. 
So um, I, I'm committing here to get that done in the next week. <laughs> so you guys can see how to do that. So um, Getty works with um, Mongo, Postgres. They have drivers for pretty much everything you can use. Um, and there's directions on how to set that up on the Getty site. Um, it defaults to local storage. So right now, if I pull up my blog again, it will be gone. Like my post will be gone because it's just for development. Um, but those settings are in the um, in the config settings. You can see the different ways to set up the drivers. So there are some good Hello World um, examples on GettyJS.org. So you can check that out. They also have an IRC channel and a whole bunch of ways to contact them. They're really responsive. Um, when I was first starting out, I asked them a million questions. So. Um, so don't tell them I sent you. <laughs> uh, OK, great. So that was something fun to do with JavaScript. It was really easy. Um, so uh, let's go on to the next part. Um, but first, I want to talk about a little bit about how I got obsessed with Arduino and robots and doing cool shit with that. Um, one of what I really like is finding something new that gets a lot of people excited, especially when someone makes it really easy, like a really low level of entry where you can play around and you don't have to dedicate an entire week to it. Um, and so when it was JavaScript, I really fell in love with it when jQuery came out, right? Because I remember JavaScript before jQuery. I remember JavaScript before Firebug. Um, and it was kind of super painful to build things in JavaScript, but all of a sudden these two things came out, made it super simple, and you can hack away for a weekend and do something pretty cool. Um, and that's when I got really into it. Um, and when it was Node, um, when NPM came out, that made it really easy to install different libraries and Express. Um, oh, I think this is behind. Okay, I think Express uh, expresses a framework that allows you to do easy routing, and um, it, uh, it makes it pretty simple to make a web application. And um, things like Getty, that's, that's what made me really like Node. But now that it's robots, um, there's something really cool that um, has come out. Um, and that is called, it's a library called Johnny5. I'm really excited to show it to you guys. Um, here's some clip art, because I found that this, I don't ever do PowerPoints. So that was exciting to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so here are the Arduinos, and I have a little one here. Um, it's this little guy. It's the Arduino Uno. He's pretty small. Um, and it was created as a really easy way for people that maybe don't have electrical engineering degrees to make cool things. Um, and so not that long ago, there's this guy named Chris Williams, and he made something called Node Serial Port. Um, and it was, a, it was a way to make programs for Arduino in JavaScript. But it was still kind of difficult, right? Like, it wasn't, it wasn't the hardest thing, but it was, it was, there was, a still, it was still a little painful. Um, there's a really good blog post called The Rise of JavaScript Robotics on uh, Chris Williams' blog. I highly recommend it. Um, I, wanna, I've, I wanted to introduce you a little more to him, um, but when I Googled that I got Chris Williams nude, which I was like, I'm just gonna stop here and just I'll, that's his that's his screen. You can find it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Johnny Five um, was made uh, by this guy named Rick Waldron, who um, was fr was from Boston. Um, he's a jQuery core contributor and um, he does a lot of things with robots. This is him talking to garbage cans, I think. Um, he works at a company called Boku, uh, which is a JavaScript consulting company. He loves robots. And there's a, a link to Johnny Five is there. It's a library he made. And that's a picture of some of it. Um, OK. So this is something that you can't see, because I can't see it either. Um, but we're going to do some of this together. Uh, and it's programming um, uh, Arduino with JavaScript. And the thing that is so cool about this, like the reason why I think this is really neat, is because it literally makes it stupidly easy to build things um, not only with Arduino, because Arduino is like super cheap. Um, it's like you can get an Adventures kit. The Adventures kit's not cheap. It's like 100 bucks, right? But if you just buy the parts, 
Um, like this guy, like the Uno and things like that. Like the Uno is probably, I think like 40 something dollars. But then all the like the add-ons, like the LCD screen and like all the LEDs and the servos and stuff like that, all those things you need to buy are like 10 bucks. And you can buy them online. And sometimes they have, um, like there's a store near me in New York where you can get a bunch of this stuff. Um, we actually had a really um, fun experience of a hardware hack weekend, which I, I'm actually going to, uh, I think we're doing it on time. I'm going to show you some of the stuff we built. But we had a hardware hack weekend in New York where it was just, like, I, I, I really like building things with people. So I just sent an email out, like, do you guys want to come for a weekend? And we charged 30 bucks. And um, we spent the entire weekend building things. And we built some really cool stuff. Um, and. And like it was really inexpensive for everyone, and you know, like the feeling. I know you got. There's probably like a lot of makers here, and there's like nothing better than the feeling of people spending time together building things. Like you feel like you're God. It's pretty amazing. Um, and with Johnny Five, it makes it super simple because there's all these different pieces that you can use with Arduino, and it makes it like so so stupidly easy. It'll be like, and you'll see, it'll be like servo dot turn. Or it'll be like um, LED pulse and things like that. And it's like the namespacing is just really simple. And you don't have to look through a lot of documentation. The code doesn't get in the way. It allows you to just be really creative. Um, and to get started with, NP with Johnny5, you just have to do npm init. And that gets you a new um, node application. And then you just do npm install Johnny5. Um, and that's it. So what we're going to play with today, and first I'm going to show you some stuff. Okay, I made, I don't know how this is going to work. Um, so I made, I decided that I think, I'm going to put this here, actually. I don't know if everyone can see that. This is my amplifier that I, that I made. So we'll see if that works. <laughs> see how long my cord is. Um, so what I did on, on the weekend, and I'll show you some of the other stuff that, that we did, um, is I'm working on, I want to make a ring that talks to my Twitter account. And it's like a real mood ring, you know, based on like what my tweets are like. So this is the, this is the first um, version of it. It's really big. So the second version of it, it's going to be really small, because I'm not about to wear all this. I um, just want to get it set up so we OK, does that work? Can everyone like kind of see that there's a lot of lights going on in there? OK. If not, then the people here can like just verify that things are happening. <laughs> All right. So first I'll show you what I did, and then we'll just do it together. All right, so I'm going back. Uh, OK. OK, so what this does is if I tweet certain things, like if I tweet the word, it was it's like a really simple working prototype. So if I tweet the word happy, um, I, it turns one color. If I tweet you know, just everything neutral, it turns another color. And if I tweet the word hate, it turns another color. So, um, so let's do that. So I'm going to get that going here. Um, OK. Yep. Oh, goodness. Hmm. Yep. It's, it's dying, though. Hold on one second. Um. That would be, yeah, that would work great. Cool. Question? <laughs> <laughs> Please have Somebody questions. Somebody ask one. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hey. Hey. Back to hi. Thank Going you. Going back to your blog, what's the advantage of building something like that using Node versus 
um, just a regular CMS for uh, people who are not developers? Uh, so the, the, difference, the difference is that it's easier for you once you learn how, how to code um, a little better, um, the, uh, you're able to edit, edit things easier, right? So like the things about CMS, it's pretty limiting. Um, as far as like I can make certain things and I can't make others. I don't know if you played with them. That's what that's what you'll notice. It's difficult to customize things on a really low level. Um, and while that's the same thing that's happening while you're doing it in Getty, it's um, it's the entry steps. You're learning how to do it differently. So what's going to happen is something's going to break, and then you're going to have to figure it out. Um, and then in the process of figuring out, you're going to learn more things about software development. Um, so it's kind of like a, uh, a toe in the water of here's the first step, and then there's going to be a bunch more steps after that. Ooh. <laughs> um, so I'm getting an error, and that might actually be my internet connection. I'm going to check in a second. Yeah. Let me just take a look and make sure and confirm. Yeah, yeah. Maybe because I haven't tweeted in a while, I'm going to try to tweet. And if not, um, we'll just move on to doing it together. Oh, I can tweet from here. Hmm. Yeah, okay, it's my internet. Um, is there another, can I connect to something else or? To one of these guys? Okay. And then if not, I can tether. All right, that looks good. Okay, so I'll try it again. So here it is connecting to the board right here, and it is connected. Fingers crossed. Okay, so can you tell that that turned green? Yeah, okay, good. Um, so that's because like nothing I tweeted has those words in it. And then I'm gonna go over to Twitter. Let's say really happy. I'll put the guy here. I'm gonna fix my spelling. Yes, that's what I want. Okay. Uh, and see, it now turned blue because I said the word happy. And if I say, okay, that seems to be all spelled correctly. <laughs> And then it turns red. Um, so how, how does that happen? How do we do that? Well, first, um, let, let. <laughs> it's really angry. <laughs> um, OK, so what I did already, um, so. I just made, for the sake of time, um, this is a really sparse version that it's going to allow us to um, play with these LEDs. So um, this is all the code you need. Uh, I have to do uh, npm install um, Johnny5, npm install Express. That will get me both of those libraries. And then there will um, npm. NPM will automatically make me an index.js, which will be is my starter file. That's where the program is started from. Um, and so 
the first thing I'm doing on line two is doing requiring Express, um, which is going to be my web server. Um, and then I'm requiring Johnny5. Um, and then I'm creating um, two, uh, two variables called one is app, one is board. The app is my local web server, which is going to be listening on port 4000. Um, and the board is my Johnny5, is um, the Johnny5 library for Arduino. So it's just creating a board. Um, so, um, and here I'm making the three LEDs. Um, I'm not sure that they are mapped correctly. So the colors may be weird. Um, but we'll see how that looks. So what I'm doing is I'm creating um, the three different colors and creating a thing called LEDs. Um, and so what I can do now, oops. I don't think I changed anything. Oh, I did change some stuff. <coughs> Just some alignment. OK, so what I can do now, and I don't still have the other app running, do I? No. Which is last red. OK. What I can do is I can run this, and there's actually a REPL with Johnny5 that allows me to play with it and see what I'm doing right there. So I'm going to do node dot. Um, and so that starts up my local node server. Um, and as you see, now it's connecting. And I have my REPL, and it's waiting for my command. So I'm going to do um, do green dot off. And I can do that. I'll try green dot on. Mm. I think I mismapped these guys. OK. Well, so I did red dot on, um, and we'll do that again. First, I'll turn it off, and then we'll take a look at what happens. OK, so now I have all the colors going, um, because it has none of them specifically asked to be, like, specifically directed to be on. So when I do red on, it's turning, it turns blue, because I have the, um, the pins mapped incorrectly. And if you want to you see what this is, this is pretty simple. It's, um, so there's three wires coming out of the um, Arduino that's mapped to this LED disk. This is actually, this LED disk is from the wearable stuff. Their um, lily pad is like wearable um, uh, Arduino things. I'm still, I'm yet to see something really cool be made. Like, I've seen some stuff that you probably wouldn't wear. Like, a friend of mine made this cool, like, game of life dress that, like, plays the game of life on your dress. Um, but that's weird <laughs> um, <laughs> to wear out. So, like, I'm really excited about, like, seeing someone make something really cool that I want to wear. Um, uh, I mean, I want to wear it, but, like, the, on the subway, that would be weird. Um, but, uh, so this is the, uh, so this is actually the wearable lily pad, and it has the, the three different LED colors on, on the actual thing. So there's three wires coming from my Arduino, and then there's a grounding wire that comes to the other side of, um, of the LEDs. So it's, I don't have a ton of equipment here. All this together cost me like 40 something dollars, and um, I get to use it a lot. So, and then I can do, um, maybe we'll try the blue dot on. Will that allow me to do anything? No, that just turned everything off. All right, well. As you can see, OK, so the blue works. How about the green? All right, well, there's stuff to be played with. All right, OK, so now it's blue and green. So as you can see, the <laughs> um, it changed to like a little different color of blue. So you can make a lot of colors with this and stuff. Um, it's fun to play with. And as you can see, it's relatively easy because there's not a lot of code involved. Um, so, you know, you, you have to mess around with it, and that's a lot of what we did over our weekend, but um, there's a lot of cool stuff to be made with JavaScript. So anyway, uh, so that's it. Um, we, we have some time for questions if anyone has them. Question? Anybody? So I'm not a writer, I'm a developer, but sometimes I work with developers. I don't want to actually do development, but I just want to be able to communicate more effectively. So what are some good resources just to sort of 
learn like the real basics. Like today, like I enjoyed your talk, but I was still like, I don't have any idea what's going on. <laughs> right. Well, there's a, a lovely lady here named Erin Kidwell. Um, she runs Girl Develop at Cincinnati. And we've pulled a lot of our students. So Girl Develop at classes right now are really entry level. They're like, they're not just for girls either. Um, they, uh, we just really wanted to encourage women to come. Um, and there's a large portion of our students that have that exact problem. There's a large portion of our students that want to become professional developers as well. Um, some of them also are starting their own businesses and they want to figure out how to get, you know, like the first edition of whatever they're building. Um, but also there's a lot of people like product managers and, you know, startup founders that work with developers all the time and like want to know what they're saying. <laughs> so, so, yeah, and it's like 20 bucks a class or something. So. So Sarah, are you planning on integrating Arduino 101 into girl development? So there's a lot of people that want to do that. Yeah, yeah, um, we're, we're talking about it. Um, I know they're in Austin, they've done, they've done some robotics classes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think I think um, that that would be really exciting. It's hard because there's like the hardware, so we, there may be like a higher cost just so we can buy the hardware for class or something. We'll figure it out. I know also that the girls can gaslight if you've been here, right? Chris doesn't go through the um, digital sciences, right? Either you're a professor. Yeah. I think I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he's still <laughs> doing this. <laughs> I'll, well, let me show you guys really quickly. Um, let me show you guys. Uh, oh, there's Justin Bieber. Um, let me show you guys the stuff that we made in our weekend, because there's like a lot of really cool stuff, I think. Um, OK. Nope. Um, so this is something that we made. Um, that this is, so this is Rick, the guy that made Johnny Five. He came for our Hardware Hack Weekend. Um, and what he did is he made a little, he got a, um, a Kinect, which I haven't played with the Kinect. I've played with the Kinect, like I've danced in front of it a lot, but I haven't like, I haven't coded with it at all. So he took a Kinect and he made like a little robot that follows his movements. Oh wait, that was a really, that was a one second, that was a one second video. I hope you caught it. Oh, uh, so I'm really bad at, <laughs> All my vines are sideways because I really don't know how to film things correctly. <laughs> so, um, like the queen of like sideways. See, that's this guy that like follows him, which is cool. A lot of this stuff is just like hacks and stuff. Um, the, here is something that's awesome that's not going to be great without sound, but you'll be able to see it. Well, it's it's really not that magical with sound, but. <laughs> So this guy made a glove that can curl the sound on his machine. So when he like goes like that, it like <laughs> so that's pretty useful. <laughs> that's <all> useful. <laughs> um, another thing that we did was we won the innovation prize in the Node Knockout this year, um, which is kind of like the Ruby Rundle, Rumble. Um, we made a Christmas sweater that talks to the internet. So I think we may have a video of that somewhere. That's somewhere. Um, but it's basically just a Christmas sweater that um, you can send messages to and it shows up on the sweater. Um, and then also, lastly, this is the best thing to come out of the weekend. Um, is Dorby the Doorbot. Oh, this might be, okay, here we go. So, Dorby the Doorbot is a, um, let me see if I can get an image of him. Oh, here we go. Oh, great. So this lives on our wall at Levo League. Um, this is something that Francis, our VP engineering, built over our Hardware Hack Weekend. Um, that's a wireless receiver. That's a Raspberry Pi in a fancy box. That's an Arduino Uno, and that's a breadboard. And this is the thing that drives us crazy is the doorbell because like no one's desk is near the doorbell. Um, so every time someone rings it, someone has to get up and let people in and we're always forgetting our keys. So all day, like people are buzzing in, it's really annoying. Um, so what Francis did 
is made this whole thing um, just to do, I saw the video. Um, here is the magic of Dorby the Doorbot. So you go on the internet, there's an, actually it's the intranet, you put a page up on the intranet, you click a button that says open, and that happens. <laughs> <laughs> and that lets everyone in the building. So anyway, that's some cool stuff that we've done uh, with Arduino and Node. So, unless there's any, any more questions, thank you guys so much for having me. Oh, I saw the LCD thing. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, um, I'm giving this to the. Um, mm, who asked about who asked about if Girl Develop is doing hardware classes? Who was that? Okay, you got the LCD thing. <laughs> Hopefully, you'll bring it to hardware classes.